Okay, this morning we're working a big, big fish. This is uh, Phosphoromus rostratus. Uh, we had a small breeding colony. Let me see what we got out of them. Got 120. What, honey? 120. Got 120. There's several. There's at least a couple hundred fry in the breeder vat. This is, uh, I want to show you these two males. This is one of our breeder males. We're going to do three breeder males. The other two are there. And we now have, let me check the chart. We've beefed up to 44 females. We're getting close. But you see this guy's got uh, his two compadres look just like him. This is a young male. And you see he's just starting to color up at this size. If you look at the, the grid, that's a one inch grid back there. Seven inches, I think. What? I think he's about seven inches. Yep. Yeah. And so he's just starting to color up at that size. This was a young male last time. The three three breeder males do a lot better job this time that now they're mature. What is he? Uh, Over eight inches. Yeah. He'll get even bigger. Okay, put him up. I'm going to put this guy with some other males. Okay, now I want to look at females. I want to show you. Not what I want to get do, fish. Okay, this is a nice big female. Nice color on her. This female's not quite as old, but it was starting to color up good. As these fish just have to get really big in order to uh, to breed. Okay, so we have 44 females, three males. I'm gonna put these. Well, I'll put them up after I talk about something. Uh, let's talk about selection. There are two types of selection. There's directed selection, that's what you just saw I did, picking breeders. And in this case, for this fish, I uh, try not to alter it. It's a wild, you know, it's a species. I try to keep it looking as much as possible as it did, it did when we got them. Uh, now on aquarium strain fish, I'm not constrained by what they look like. My imagination is what uh, what drives the selection, and I can have a huge impact on on fish. Uh, in fact, the next fish we're doing, um, tentatively calling blue-green dolphin, is that it? Blue-green dolphin, yeah. Uh, I'm trying to get a, get a good green color along with blue. Uh, it's in the early stages, but by selecting one or two really good males, giving them a bunch of females. I raise up a bunch of young fish. If I get a male that has as closer to blue-green dolphin that I, uh, I imagine it to be, then it, it'll it replace the breeder males. Uh, if not, I breed the breeder males back to their daughters, sometimes granddaughters, even great-granddaughters. Uh, I've probably have gone back, you know, gone as far as uh, five times great-granddaughters made it to their grandfathers. Uh, inbreeding is a great tool. We use it all the time. Absent inbreeding, we wouldn't be able to support the seven billion people on this planet because our, uh, it's inbreeding that developed the, the livestock breeds and the plants uh, that produce high volumes. Uh, it's a great tool. It lets you get rid of bad uh, genes, deleterious characteristics by selecting them out of the population. Uh, and it lets you concentrate the good ones. Now the other, so that's directed selection, which is what we do with our livestock, with our food plants, with our pets, uh, you know, like in German Shepherds, or so was in here in a minute, uh, a minute ago, uh, uh, there's been a concerted effort to breed out hip dysplasia in German Shepherds, and it's had a huge impact in just 20, 30 years. Uh, we, Unfortunately, we use directed selection to do things like pugs who have difficulty breathing, and uh, so so it's a it's a double-edged sword. But uh, it lets uh, it 
it can be beneficial. Okay, the other type of selection is natural selection. And believe it or not, that's a huge factor in these greenhouses. Uh, the Texas winter storm last uh, winter selected for fish who could tolerate getting cold. Uh, we lost 85% of our inventory fish. That doesn't count uh, feral fish that died and uh, you know some fish that died and and uh, fry and juveniles that hadn't been inventoried. Uh, that was a bottleneck natural selection uh, for cold resistance. Now that might put a fish going into summer and at a disadvantage. For example, if you're a rainbow trout, you you get stressed at 65 degrees Fahrenheit. If you're uh, a uh, Lake Tanganyika and cichlid, you're getting stressed at that temperature going down below that. That uh, so it uh, sometimes there's contravening selection, uh, uh, or you end up selecting for fish that can tolerate both extremes, and that I think that's what happens in our greenhouse. One interesting uh, rapid natural selection in the greenhouse is selection against going over a waterfall. Uh, the fish in the vats come show this overflow. This is a 300 gallon breeding vat and you see these, these are uh, one inch overflow lines. Any fish that goes over that becomes a feral fish is out of the breeding population. You can see a bunch of guppies in there. Those guppies won't go over. Uh, because they've been selected generation after generation, the ones that go over out of the gene pool, out of the 300 gallon gene pool, the ones that stay in uh, are genetically predisposed to stay in and their offspring are going to do as well. And that happens with our cichlids and swordtails and all the, all the fish where there's a large o overflow. Uh, there's rapid selection for fish that don't go out. So I saw that we have a 800 gallon water trough for that uh, cattle water trough that and when I was six years old I raised my first uh, fish some goldfish in it uh, we stocked it with uh, Coletto Creek sailfin mollies Facelia latipenna and Coletto Creek uh, killifish uh, fundulus uh, chrysotis it used to have a float on it and a water line to it and so whenever the horses or anybody drank it down or evaporation, it'd fill back up to that point that it wouldn't overflow. Well, I disconnected that water line and, you know, at, at some point, and so I run a hose out every once in a while, fill it up. Invariably, I forget, and it overflows. The first time I did that, about 80% of the fish ended up on the ground. Uh, the second time there were fewer but today a couple decades later uh, none of those fish will swim out uh, of the water trough i can let it overflow for a day and, and none will be out that's because they've been selected for fish that don't do that okay i'm going to put these fish up uh, we're going to let natural selection take over i've done the directed selection now it's uh, those males and females that are best at eating reproducing and and staying healthy and taking our summertime temperatures will do best. Good fish keeping.